Hello and welcome to the next episode of The Disruptive Author. And today we have someone who's very disruptive. I would like to say the definition of disruptive, disruptive, especially after the conversation that we've just had about actually consciously going out of our way to <laughs> do something disruptive on a regular basis. Uh, so today I'd like to welcome Julie Cross, who's our feature author for this next issue. Hi, Julie. Hi. Hello, everybody. So happy to be here with you, Deb, of course, and of course, all of your listeners and viewers. Hi. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Very cool. So, all right. So we've got some questions for you. Uh, I won't be surprised if we go a little off track today, uh, just because that happens, life happens, and it's not a bad thing. Uh, so for the listeners, let's just start off. Tell us about your author journey. How many books have you authored or co-authored or contributed to so far? Okay. Well, Deb, I co-contributed to um, one of yours, where I won't be forward to, um, and that's around that autism journey, of course, the, the living and loving with autism and the parenting a child on the spectrum. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's always fun. Oh, boy, we always got a story there. So yeah. um, I got to share some of my reflections and thoughts um, in your book, which was a real honour. And I think that that actually what is then kind of, because I had that book idea in my head and I'd been asked for it, but then once I kind of did that, I think um, it, it kind of fueled my fire, I guess you would say, and thought, well, come on, I've got, you know, I can get my book done. And so then I did my book, just, it's called Just Who Does She Think She Is? Uh, because I had that moment writing a book, you know, I'm this little girl from the bush. And so suddenly she's writing a book. I mean, just who do I think I am? You know, that, everyone relates to that. To some yeah, that, that imposter so, syndrome yeah. or, yeah. you know, could I be doing this? And so who I wrote that you? book. <laughs> yeah, I know, just who am I? Yeah. Um, and then um, contributed to your next, the next book again around um, that ongoing journey of parenting a child on the spectrum. Like and the then next level. Yeah, the next level. That's right. Going <laughs> deeper. Um, going longer. Going harder. Still some more stories. <laughs> yeah. Still run out of stories. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, um, and there has been a couple of other books, sort of business books that I've sort of co-contributed to too. So I guess that that you know I've had one book of my own and then those other um, contributions that I've made. So that's been the journey so far. Awesome. I'm sure there'll be um, there'll be many more because um, you're just a storyteller. You, you really are a natural storyteller and you've had so many, I guess, experiences uh, in your life that are quite unique or they're just big. Everything you do is just big. Yeah, it does feel a bit like that. I, I often say that I definitely, you know, if you think about the, when you they were buying tickets, you were buying, selling tickets for the sort of life that you were going to have, I definitely got in the roller coaster line and not the merry-go-round <laughs> line. And every now and again, I'm like, why didn't I get in that line over there? But I thought, no, oh, no, that would have been way too calm for Julie, you know. Yes, so, totally. Um, so, yes, there's definitely, um, and I think, it, I mean, and I'm sure that you would say this that you know and I've heard this before before I wrote the book people would say everybody's got a book in them and so I guess you know we when you talk about storytelling we all have a story don't we and we're all made up of you know multiple stories in our life and that's how we got to here so so if that's what writing a book is about then um yes then I would say that there is many more books to come mm, yeah mm, totally I'm looking forward to that so, um, and of course, you know, when you speak, um, you just sharing your story uh, is always, um, uh, well, well, we've talked about this. You're in, like an edutainer. Yes. So yeah. Educating and entertaining at the same time. Um, and if you can do that through your book, which you do, um, yeah. you know, just who does she think she is, um, definitely covers that. Yes, that's right. And so, and it is definitely um, when you talk about storytelling, and that's why storytelling resonates, isn't it? Because it does take people on a feeling journey. And that's what I do in my speaking as well. I think that there are, you know, when you have, you, there are books that ed just educate. So that puts information in our heads. There are speakers that do that too, that give you the strategies, the processes, the procedures to follow. Um, they give you the statistics. And so all of that to me is head information, you know, but then we need the emotion. And it's the emotion that, that creates motivation. Emotion is motion. That is movement and that is motivation. So when people say to me, you know, how do I motivate my staff? I say, you don't just give them the procedure, you give them the story around it because the story evokes emotion. And so that's why storytelling um, is something we crave. That's why storytelling is the most powerful form of education because it entertains as well and it creates the emotion around the message that you're trying to give. And so, you know, it's so interesting when I look back at... Um, you know, my past, and you asked him one of the questions around this. And when I look back into my past, 
about what I was meant to be doing with my life, you know, there were two things that resonated. And one was that I grew up in the bush and we used to have those old wooden tank stands and sometimes they wouldn't have any tanks on them. You know, as a little girl, I would get a ladder, push it up on the side of that tank stand, climb up on it because to me it wasn't a tank stand. It was a stage, baby. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I would perform to this oh, imaginary no. audience. Now, I wasn't probably performing a speech back then. I was probably dancing or something. But... Mm. But isn't that interesting, you know, and I know that we hear people, um, these professional development and personal development um, gurus talk about if you want to know what your dharma is or what you should be doing in your life, look back to your past mm. and your childhood. And that was one of the things I did. But what I also did, and this is the writing thing, is that mum gave me one day a book that I had when I was a young girl. And it was just a normal exercise book that you buy for your kids to take to school. But I'd written on the front special things. And in it, I had typed and writ handwritten a collection of affirmations and positive quotes that I must have collected out of Reader's Digest and magazines yeah. but I'd also written some stories and I was always at school I reflected chosen to read my stories to the class um, as an example of a good story so there's the writing thing you know so inbuilt yeah so and I think that um you know, and sort of writing on social media platforms and everything. And then, you know, with working with you and then that that first um, contribution um, to your that book that you produced. And I think that really fired that writing back up in me again and saying, oh, no, this is the other thing that I'm meant to be doing here is not just the, the spoken word. It's also um, the written word. Yeah. It's all about communication, isn't it? And as you said, making people or helping them to feel something. And that's definitely my experience through, you know, with, with producing the books. People want to feel something. Absolutely. You know, they, they want to know, even if unconsciously, they want to know they're alive. Yeah, absolutely. And even, you know, and it's interesting because, um, you know, not all of our stories, and you said before about the the world of um, living with autism and parenting a child on the spectrum. You know, some of these are, are funny stories. And so I've maintained my sense of humour and, and I thank God for that because I wouldn't probably be here talking to you if I hadn't. I don't know where I'd be. But but in some of them are sad stories. And so some of them are painful stories to tell. But that is that is life, you know, that is life that, that we want up and down. And I think a great um, analogy of this is, that when you watch a, a film, you know, you're watching a movie and it's sometimes it gets so sad and then it's so happy and then it's so sad. But if, if somebody said to you, you know, look, I'll turn it off now because you're getting sad, we'd go, no, I want to see what happens at the end of the movie. No, you know, and if it wasn't a movie of all those emotions, we wouldn't walk away saying, God, that was a great movie. But exactly. often it is the movie that makes us laugh the loudest and cry the hardest that we walk away and go, that was a fantastic movie because we felt it, you know, life's a feeling journey. And, that, and that's what I think writing um, is about too it's about you know having making sure that people are coming along with you and, and can feel it and that's one of the things about reading a book that always just amazes me that I can read this these black and white words on a paper on a piece of paper and they yep. can evoke such emotion in me yep. um, that's incredible you know yep. I think that's incredible so my kids would call that going on a fields trip yeah, I love that. Oh, gosh, love I love that. that. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So when you can take someone on a fields trip, um, yeah. then you, you've had some success, I think, totally. Yeah. So tell me, how does how does writing or how can you use writing to lead into your work? Um, yeah. Tell me what you're doing now for those few people on the planet that don't know you. Um, yeah, I know. So, well, you know, it's interesting because when you look now at people getting into the speaking industry and becoming a speaker, because I, that's obviously what I do, and, and um, you know, and I call it an inspirational entertainer as well, which follows through what you were saying about educating and entertaining. Uh, so a lot of people do it the other way around. So they would then write the book and they would use the book as leverage for a speaking business, you know, because they would be going out speaking about the book and promoting the book and that would sort of create um, requests to speak, et cetera, on their ex subject that they were an expert on, what they'd written a book on. Whereas, you know, and I said in those questions that, you know, that's the usual way. But, of course, I don't do anything the usual way when you said about being disruptive. You know, mm -hmm. the way I do it is the way that it flowed, and I didn't know there was a usual way of doing it. And so <laughs> I just got on stages and found the stages and started speaking, and it came the other way for me that then people, then my tribe that I'd sort of, you know, had been to my shows and everything would start to say, when's your book coming out, Julie? Where is your book? So that's kind of, that instigated, and then, oh, okay, well, obviously I have an audience now that wants a book, so maybe I should create a book. Mm -hmm. And so for me still too, and once again, it's probably the other way, 
Um, my focus, and you probably noticed this about me too in, in being an expert in your field in publishing, that, that I don't, um, the sales of my book isn't paramount to me. You know, I'm not out there pushing my book all the time. It's pretty much back a room sales. So my thing is still my speaking. And then people have something to take home with them of me, you know. So so more of those stories, you know, this particular book, just who she thinks she is, has um, little activities that you can do and go a little bit deeper into the process at the end of each chapter, et cetera. So, mm -hmm. and then what the beautiful thing is, is that then people when they want to gift me to their friends, they've got something to give them and they often buy, you know, five or 10 books at a time and gift me to their friends, which is lovely. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how it works for me. You know, it's that product at the back of the room. Most times people buy my book when they've heard me speak. Yeah, and that's something that um, with many of our authors, I tell them to take the books with them when they go places because then when people do connect with them, they're like, oh, well, where can I get a copy? Or Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. So that's definitely how it works for me. Yeah. yeah. And it's a beautiful thing because I, I think there's nothing worse, And but even if you're reading the book first and before you go and see someone, there's nothing worse than having a connection with someone and then not being able to, and there it ends. You yeah, can't that's have right. more of them. Yes, that's right. And that's, I guess, what was happening before. And that's why they were asking, you know, and this is what I say too is listen closely to your tribe because the universe is whispering through them to whisper to you to tell you where to go next, you know, and what to do next, which is why, you know, that leads on to my next book, which is going to be that first um, that first 18 years of living and loving with autism. So that'll be my next focus. And so it's interesting too, you know, that just who does she think she is more my show that you see when you come and see me that's more it sort of written whereas this one will come about because you know my posts were that I do around living and loving with autism and that journey just get so much attention on social media platforms mm -hmm. so again that's a whisper to me that um, the world wants to read more about that or the world is interested in that and what's lovely is that it's not just people who are living with autism it's actually the wider community that are just interested and are empathetic and want to learn but also want to get the messages that come from um you know this journey and there's so many messages and there's so many learnings that come from it that I love sharing with everybody else and so so there again I hear the whispers and say well obviously the the, the time is right for that book you know so yes. as well mm. I um read something that you wrote the other day about uh, your journeys around the local area where you live uh, and you came across a I was going to say a young man but he was wasn't actually a young man but he just looked a bit different and you know yes. what you've learned through your journey you were able to approach him quite differently yes that's right and that was a really you know and this is where the thing we got it the life is always trying to give us these little miracle moments mm -hmm. and sometimes we're just so busy that we're you know rushing past them and we're not capturing them and so I think I have learned and that's that comes with slowing down a little too I think and it also you know somebody when I write about these moments somebody said to me once in you know messaged me on social media and said how come you get all the miracles or how come you get all those magic moments and I'm like no well, you get them too but you're just not noticing them yeah. everybody gets them totally um, yeah, and what you, you think they were serious? Like, did they oh, really well, believe? I think they were. Maybe I've said it like that in that tone of voice, but maybe it was more of a genuine, what am I doing wrong? Like, why am I missing yeah. out? You know, that's and I sad said, for them. That's right. And that's why I said, yeah. no, we all get them. And so, this particular one yesterday, and look, I could have easily on another day brushed past it, but yeah. I'm so glad for whatever reason yesterday. Um, I was tr triggered and slowed down enough to, to notice it and to be in it. So this was this, yeah, gentleman, you know, and, and I'm not going to say that, and I was with um, my partner, Craig, and I'm not going to say that we didn't kind of think, oh, what's he doing? Because he was kind of leaning over this stream, talking to himself and shoveling all this mud and dirt up and shifting rocks. And, yeah. and, it, and it looked odd. He had no shirt on and, you know, it was quite a cool afternoon and he did look odd and he sounded odd. But, you know, that's Thomas on any other day standing at traffic lights. So I'm, I'm now aware of that and so rather than judging I'm more loving in situations like that and so but, but I'm kind to myself when I do judge because it's a lot of conditioning that we've all had that that allows us to immediately judge you know so we've been conditioned to think like that so it takes a long time to undo all that conditioning mm -hmm. and so you know so I heard him and saw him and you know and I know a lot of people would have given him a very wide berth thinking oh this that is they were unsafe odd. or yeah that's right felt unsafe don't know what to say this is just odd he's he's oh but anyway so as we got closer I sort of said oh so what are you doing here today and he just looked up 
he put his hands on his hips and he had a big tattoo of a butterfly that he slapped his chest and he said, my name's Shane. He said his last name and I'm 47 years old and I've had a brain injury, my butterfly tattoo and I've had a brain injury. And, um, and you know, and he's telling us all about that. And I recovered and, and I shouldn't even be alive. I was in a coma for weeks and, I, and uh, we were like, oh, good on you. Congratulations. That's amazing. And I kind of did a bit of this and then he, and I said, well, what are you doing here? I said, we're just trying to find a place to cross the stream here without getting our feet wet. And he goes, well, I'm making a bridge. I'm making the bridge. Look at the rocks. I'm making the bridge. And I go, oh. I said, can we use your bridge? He said, yes, you can use the bridge. Oh my God. I picked up this big stone, threw it down. So I had another rock. He goes, go on, use the bridge. <laughs> so we used the bridge. Yeah, and we the bridge. You know, and I just, in that moment, I just thought, you know, here I am in Mother Nature getting all the lessons from Mother Nature. And then suddenly there's a fellow human um, just reminding me again that we all have a stage to serve this world from. You know, mm-hmm. I'm sure that he can't hold down a real job. But there he is making what he feels like his contribution is, the one thing maybe he can do today to help us keep our feet dry. And I think, well, good on you. You've made a difference in our life today. You know, thank you. And so everyone's got value. Everyone's got a place. Everyone's got something to offer. And every now and again, we need to stop and and just give them a round of applause, you know, so that they feel valued and validated and, um, and, you know, and so, yeah, it was just one of those moments and you think, and, and because of Thomas, because I'm more aware of inclusion, because I'm more aware of, um, you know, the, the magic that diversity brings and that we're all different and what we've got to offer, um, I'm able to do that. So what a gift of doing this journey with autism. So do you think, um, this wasn't in your list of questions, but do you think <laughs> that's the, like the essence of your message is that we all do have value mm. and you've just got to find your own? Yeah, absolutely, you know, absolutely. And that's, um, and COVID brought that home to me again with, um, you know, with COVID, like I lost my stage like many other people did. Um, you know, we were all, as professional speakers, we were all together at a conference that just so happened that weekend in Adelaide when everything went to hell and we were all getting messages pretty much all together. Our phones were going off just cancelling our year. You know, it was just all, all done, poof, all gone from that weekend in March. The rest of the year was cancelled. Yeah. And so, you know, we all went into a little bit of that panic and 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 then there was the pressure to pivot. You're like, and I was thinking, I don't know where to pivot. I'm to. Where am sick I of that pivot? word, seriously. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pandemic pivot. And so I was like, Julie, just do a pandemic pause. So I just paused for a moment and thought, you know, again, because... I'm not one to follow along after everybody else. You know, suddenly everyone was getting studios. I'm like, oh, my God, I've got to shift. I've got to get a studio. And it was like, just relax, sit, pause for a moment. You've got time to do this. And then, well, I say that I kind of did a bit of a pirouette out of it. But, but you know, rather than a pivot. But, but what I did challenge myself on, though, one day I woke up and I was feeling a bit low, you know, no work. And I said, hang on, Julie, you tell everybody all the time that we've all got a stage to make a difference in the world from. Now, you might not have a paid stage today, but we all have a stage. And so that's when I went to the IGA. Now, I didn't know it was going to be my stage. It was all <laughs> I was doing was buying some ham. But you know what? The girl at the delicatessen at the IGA, she didn't look very inspired in her work today. <laughs> You know, she looked a bit habitual and routine and maybe she'd been affected by some of those negative people that are buying toilet paper and being nasty. Oh, I don't totally. know. Totally, yep. She was a bit low and I thought, well, this is my work today. So I went up to her and I said, oh, 200 grams of ham, please. You know, so she kind of grabbed that ham with the tongs, threw it on the scales. Anyway, she's looking a bit and I'm looking at the, the scales. I'm looking at the number. I look back at her. I look at the scales again. I look back at her. She's <laughs> hit 200 grams right on the money. Oh, so I go, <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's amazing, 200 grams right from the first. Uh, you know, yeah. and, she's like, and then she goes bright red and I said, you should have a bell when that happens and ring it. I said, don't tell me that doesn't feel good. And she kind of leaned in and goes, it does feel pretty good. <laughs> Next thing you know, everyone in the IGA is running to the deli. What's happening in the deli? What? I said, 200 grams of ham first time right on the money. So yeah. suddenly we're all chatting, a community connecting, a community in the, mo- the moment that is scared, that is fearful, that has been acting out. You know, suddenly we're all laughing together, talking. Um, you know, and then you know, the next guy looks at her and goes, 125. 
five grams, you know. So there was this <laughs> laugh, you know. And so when I walk in now and she's on, you know, we just have a bit of a smile and a con. You know, we've all got a stage. If I can make her laugh that day, I might not have got paid for it with money, but I got paid karmically, like in the balance of life. My karma, you know, you, yeah, you, you know, you've made a difference. So people are our work. You know, this is our work. Humans, fellow humans are our job to, to sort of leave them better somehow. Isn't that what we're all doing? Whatever product or service we're selling, it's about trying to add value and leave people better. Mm. And so I do have a stage still. It may not be a paid stage, but the wonderful thing, as you know, Deb, is you just never know where all that goes because life will reward you somehow. And I guess I just choose to believe that, that it comes back to me somehow. So, And I think it's very two-dimensional. If if you're just thinking, I do this, I get paid for that, you know, and there's just this. And then that's when people hold back. Because they hold back. That, and then that's right, yeah. you know, that's right. So if you just go out with that that natural, you know, that you want to give and, you know, it doesn't cost me anything to do that. It doesn't cost me anything. Of, you know, I'm there anyway. So what does it hurt to try and make someone laugh or to lighten somebody's load, you know? And I had another lesson of this. And, you know, don't get me wrong, there are times I've missed them mm. and I have probably been the, been the grumpy one, you know, and walked away and thought, oh, <laughs> You know, gee, um, Julie, sparkle, not so sparkly today. So I'm not saying I get it right every time. But um, I think I'm aware enough to, to reflect and know when I missed it and, and sort of give myself a talking to too. And I'm human as well. But also know when, um, you know, th- there, there is that opportunity. And there was another time where I was at the bus stop and um, it was just after we shifted to Redcliffe and Thomas was... Um, needing to catch the, the bus to, to Petrie and had missed the first bus and autism, you know, we're upset, we're angry, the bus isn't on time, stressed. And so I walked back up with him to the bus stop to sort of make sure he got on the bus and that it all worked out. And, mm-hmm. and he was grumpy at me and swearing and cussing. So we were sitting on opposite seats. And in the meantime, an old elderly lady had come along and sat beside me. And I noticed that she had a sign on her a little tag on her shirt saying vision, vision, vision impaired. Yeah. Yep, yep. So and she sort of started chatting to me and her name was Rosemary and she told me that she was waiting for this bus and could I let her know when the bus came? Okay. Anyway, because she couldn't see it properly. And so Thomas ended up getting his bus and I went to walk off because I now I'm busy. I've got work to do. I've got stuff to go and do. I've got phone calls to make. I've been stressed because of Thomas. And then I realised Rosemary and I looked back at her and said, oh, um, my son's gone now, Rosemary. Are you okay? And she said, oh, no, I'm wondering if you could still wait with me. Now, there was that thing in me was like, I've got to go. I've got shit to do. But then the universe, I've got work to do. You know, I've got this work. I've got to, and the universe whispered to me, Julie, this is your work. This is your work. No, you know, not. what more important work could be our fellow humans in this moment? And so ah, I breathed and sat down and had a wonderful conversation with Rosemary. And um, yeah, we had all these connections that you wouldn't believe, and it was amazing. And so, yeah, so life is um, all those coincidences, all that serendipity. To me, that's the magic of life. That's mm. the magic. And they're the stories, Deb, aren't they? They're totally the stories. And I feel like, you know, it seems to me your objective wherever you are is to find the joy and when you find the joy the lessons that come from that yeah absolutely it is the joy because I think that we're denying ourselves joy and I think that we've forgotten that we still have a right to our joy you know no matter what and you know my story I've got been through some very traumatic events and I think that when I share about pain and about grief and about the challenging times the one thing oh yes and I read something really interesting the other day which I'm going to put in a book but anyway but I think that what we forgot was we allow ourselves our pain now we've gotten better at that but we've forgotten we can get back up we've forgotten that we actually have a right to to feel joy again and that and that you know that's that relationship with whether we are worthy of our joy Mm -hmm. and that we need not feel guilty about finding our joy again after we've gone through so much pain. So I think that we're stuck at this vulnerability, you know, and we get an outpouring from people when we're in a low space, you know, because we're sad and we've had something terrible happen. And so people give an outpouring to us. Um, We've got to be as supportive when people stand up proudly and strong and say, I've got my life together and it's working fantastic and I'm so happy. Mm -hmm. We're a little bit more like, oh, Jesus, we're lucky you. (laughs) You know, you know, you know what I mean, though. There's oh, a little bit of that. Yeah, yeah. 
there's a little bit of that going on. Yeah. Um, so no matter what we're going through, we have a right to our joy. And, you know, and I, what I always say is because of the depths of despair I've been to, I know the equal and opposite heights of joy. You know, yeah. so, so I thank the pain I've been through because of that depth of that pain. I believe I experience heights of joy that maybe some people never reach because you need the equals and opposites. You know, you don't know how to do that. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So, um, but yeah, joy, it's, um, we've forgotten how to laugh, you know, to really throw our heads back and laugh easily, you know, look for laughter and look for, we, we, look, we look for reasons to be offended as opposed to look for reasons to find joy, you know, yeah. just got to watch the news for five minutes to see that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Good, good thing to avoid that, I think. Oh, yeah. I think so too. <laughs> read it, look, read the book. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to sort of wind things up. We know you've got some oh, projects yeah. on the go. Um, how can, because I just anyone that hasn't actually seen you before that that has the opportunity to listen to this um, is going to want to find out more about you so how can they where can they go sure. well the best place to go is my website it's juliecross.com.au so um j-u-l-i-e-c-r-o-s-s.com.au and there you can join my database where you'll get a um, newsletter directly newsletter directly into your um inbox but otherwise all my social media platform links are in there as well which i'm, I'm active across all of those um platforms as well so of course i would love to connect so yes the next book um living and loving with autism i'm in the middle of now and um hope to get that, that out soon so awesome. yes and you've got a rock star in the background there oh, yeah. just yeah. ducking behind the hello that's my thomas <laughs> hello that's thomas my... <laughs> awesome. that was a nice timely entrance there yeah that's very good <laughs> But thank you and thanks um, for all your support and help them. Thanks for all that you do. Thanks for the difference that you're making on that stage you've chosen to serve the world from. You've made a difference to me, so I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, my love. I've, been, I've really enjoyed this today. Look forward to doing some more in the future. But for today, we're done. So have a wonderful yes. rest of the day. Yes, and you too. It's great to see you all. Thank you all so much. Bye-bye. Bye.